Hi, I'm James Schillinglaw aboard the World Navigator of Atlas Ocean Voyages. I'm here with Greg O'Hara, who's the founder and managing partner of Sertaris, which just happens to be an investor in Atlas Ocean Voyages, as well as a number of other travel companies. You probably have heard, been reading the news. And we're going to talk to Greg about this ship, about Sertaris, and about the travel industry as a whole, uh, as an investment, and also as what the future holds. And you're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Well, Greg, first of all, it's great to see you. I didn't expect you to be on this ship, but I guess you own a little part of it, uh, your, your stake, and you came on to try it out, and I think your daughter's with you, and you're having a good time, and uh, we're enjoying the Mediterranean. That's great. Yeah, yes, thank you. Um, it's very difficult to invest in assets unless you visit them. When you try to explain to your investors or anyone else that you own part of something or all of something and have never visited, you seem capricious about your uh, your investment techniques. So we like to see everything. Uh, I have a partner on the ship and he's brought his parents and I've brought uh, uh, my daughter. That's great and fantastic. Although one of these days you'll have to go experience the Antarctic that they do when they eventually get down there. That's the real thing, right? I think this cruise is better for us because uh, it, I'd have to displace a revenue passenger in order to in, in order to, in order to do that, and we'd hate to do that to any travel agent is is uh, take away revenue opportunities from. That's them. great. Well, first of all, let's let's talk about this ship. So far, you know, you got on a few days ago. What's your impression of the ship? Is it what you thought it would be? Yes, um, this is not the first one we've we, we've put out. It's I think it's the first one branded Atlas. Right. Uh, we have two other sister ships like that, and you know we have a series of them coming coming on board. Each one of them gets a little better than the last, and I would say this is the the best one we've produced. Uh, I'm impressed with certainly the, the most opulent. I got to tell you, it's beautiful. I haven't seen the others, but I can't imagine you know the paneling, the decor, the the cabins, everything else. They're similar. Um, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised then if you haven't seen the other ones. I it's it's seen. the the fit and finish is the same. What I've been impressed with is the ride on this ship because of the stabilizers and whatnot. For a small ship, I don't know if you've noticed, we haven't really moved around a whole lot. Are we, are we cruising? You, you can barely tell. <laughs> uh, it is. It has been an amazing ride. And it, it, today it's pretty smooth, but earlier, before you got on, actually, there was some white caps, and I said, we're not moving. What's going on here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's the, the tech is very good. Um, and this is, as, as the agency community knows, this is what we refer to as a shakedown cruise. So there are supposed to be a lot of problems that haven't presented themselves yet. So we're pleasantly surprised that the ship has been a lot more ready to go than we thought. Well, it's definitely going. It's going to go into revenue service very shortly. So we're looking forward to that. Now, for the record, uh, I do want to say a lot of people say, well, this is a startup line. Well, it's not really. And, and, and wondering about the financial backing. But, you know, here you are, Sertaris, uh, uh, Mario Fajira, who is uh, uh, your other partner on this. this. This has got solid financial backing, right? Absolutely. So um, the company itself, we've invested hundreds of millions of euros in. Uh, we did that actually prior to launching Atlas. So uh, Mystic Invest owns great brands like uh, Nikko in, in Germany. Mm -hmm. And and we've done a great job at identifying companies that need capital to grow. Mm -hmm. And so we came at Mystic Invest because of its excellent ability to operate vessels. Mm -hmm. And Mario had a vision, Mario and Paula actually, had a vision to operate uh, uh, polar explorer ships and small cruise ships on the ocean. And we funded that vision and are very, very happy to be in business with uh, Mario and Paula, Paula Ferreira. No, they're excellent partners. And I, I've only met Mario a couple of times times, but I uh, had some time to spend with him because he's on with his family and it's uh, a really great guy and, and someone who really knows cruising. So let's talk a little bit about Sataris and when you founded it and was this specifically to fund uh, travel projects uh, or was when, why did you start it? Uh, so uh, I was formerly the CIO of J.P. Morgan Chase, right. which most people know, and uh, when I went off to go on my own, I'd been a travel manager early in my career, really? actually. Where? Where? Uh, uh, several places. So uh, I worked at Sabre for a number of years. I then uh, did a leverage buyout of Worldspan uh, la later on. These are all kind of legacy names that people will recognize. And I had a number of jobs in the travel industry. When I bought Worldspan, that kind of got me into the investing business because right. I took capital from Ontario Teachers Pension Plan and I took a big loan from Citi. And we took that capital, we bought Worldspan, we helped it grow by plugging into all the online travel agents. Mm -hmm. That got me into the investing business, so now I had one foot in travel and one foot in the investing business. Mm -hmm. Over the course of the next decade or so, 
J.P. Morgan graciously let me make a lot of travel investments and then made me one of the chief, chief investment officers at J.P. Morgan. When I decided to go do something on my own, it made sense to marry the two of those things, uh, investing prowess and, and travel business. One of the interesting things was I found that when I looked around to see who my competitor set might be, the only uh, specialist uh, in the in the world that invests in travel, uh, let's just set hotels aside because there's a lot of people who right. buy hotels. But travel operating businesses would be Sertaris. So right now we are um, a multi-billion-dollar investment house. We have products. We 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 have a real estate product. Uh, we have a um, we have a uh, distressed product. We have a long-term equity product, mm -hmm. uh, and we're about to start a venture venture capital pro pro product. I hope. So yeah, so you'll get uh, startup businesses and get them going really. Right. And of course, the the deal maybe most people know you for uh, was when you uh, you got Travel Leaders Group, which is now Internova, right? Uh, yes. So so we we bought Carl with my partner Mike Bat. We bought you know Mike very well. He's a great guy. great guy. One of my all time favorites. Yeah. Uh, we bought. Carlson Leisure Group out of uh, uh, out of that we had to rename it uh, Travel Leaders. It's then since got very big and it was confusing to people because we had one branch of the company that was an operating business called Travel Leaders and then a parent called Travel Leaders and people were. I, I was confused as a journalist, so I'm glad you cleared that up for me. We tried. <laughs> we, you know, uh, we are we are operating guys and investing guys. Sadly, we're not as good at branding and marketing as right. other people are. So we listened to the travel agency community and our customers and tried to. Tr tried to rationalize that confusion. So we, it's called Internova now. Um, uh, that was that was one of our first investments after we left. We also bought American Express Global Business right, Travel. That's a huge one, yeah. Yeah, that was a big one. Uh, we're probably one of the largest investors, if not the largest, in TripAdvisor, uh, where I'm the vice chairman, and we've recently taken Hertz out of bankruptcy. I work. saw that. Yeah, that was an amazing, uh, amazing move, and and so hard to believe that Hertz was in bankruptcy, but uh, you've saved it for now, and it's going to go ahead and, and grow. Yeah, over the years, uh, Hertz had balance sheet problems. Over the years, they'd right. borrowed too much money in a previous lever leverage buyout. Um, they had legacy management that probably didn't make the right decisions for the customers and the distributors. And so uh, today, I'd, I'd argue that Hertz has uh, one of the largest, uh, one of the strongest balance sheets, if not the strongest balance sheet, certainly in the rental car industry, if not the entire uh, travel industry. So it, it's it's a it's a very strong company, um, and look for us to make a lot of bold moves in uh, uh, electric vehicles, in telematics, uh, and doing a lot of things for customers. For instance. You know, you've been in the industry a long time. You've probably rented a lot of cars. Sitting here, I can't see the reason why, with today's technology, you'd ever have to stand in line for a rental car. And I've and done that many times over the years. Correct. And if we have to stand in line, can you imagine what the average person has to st yeah. has to go through? And so, because sometimes we get we get courtesy from uh, being in the industry. I, I think that you're going to find that there'll be a lot of moves that 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 Hertz makes. Um, that are going to be innovative, same as GBT. Uh, I think you look when we bought American Express GBT, it went from being a division of American Express that wasn't necessarily focused on inside of American Express. Now it has world-leading technology. It has what we think is the best management team in the industry, um, and its 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 growth has been unrivaled. Like absent the pandemic, uh, yeah, our our Kager was uh, sorry our our compounded annual growth rate was uh, to be envied throughout throughout the industry there. Paul Abbott, who's the CEO of that business, uh, Mike Qualantone, who takes care of the suppliers, and the entire management team are absolutely top notch. I, 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 it, I can't think of anyone I'd rather have than those guys running that company. Well, it's great that you got American Express, two wonderful brands, American Express on the, on the business travel side, and Hertz, which, you know, I grew up with Hertz being the number one, Hertz being the one you all aspire to, and then over the years, sadly, they, they had their challenges, especially in the last few years, but it's great that you got, you know, they're back on their feet and they're going to be strong again. Yes, yeah, we agree. It's, it's, it's always great to take brands that have lost confidence in themselves and give them confidence again but what we really enjoy is it's great to see the employees who work in these businesses like this is kind of the most rewarding thing uh, the employees who work in these businesses regain confidence in the companies that they work at and and regain con confidence in the products they're offering uh, w w that's probably the nicest thing that, that, that we see now the other things, and the other some other companies that you're invested in, like Emma Waterways and G Adventures, which you know great brands and great unique products, but you know obviously 
uh, needed more capital and and uh, also in some cases obviously the pandemic has has caused a hit but what, what do you look for uh, in a company like that well if you think of all the things that you've just mentioned um, you mentioned mystic and it has Mario and Paula right. um, uh, it you mentioned Amma waterways well, Avi, Rudy and, and Christine who are what Christine there's, right there's Rudy, that's everything correct they're the best uh, you mentioned G adventures and Bruce Poon tip is is a class of his own we tend to partner with these with, with these people, you should think of us as kind of noses in the business, but fingers out. And we want we want really strong management teams that can manage the business. We can provide capital and ideas. I always like to joke around saying I have ten ideas that I think are good, but I really don't know which five are good and which five are bad. And that's the the man sometimes zero out of the ten. Uh, but that's the management team uh, to to tell us which ones are good and which ones are bad. And and we want to support the management teams in any way we can. Well, th those those uh, those stakes are really, I think, hopefully, will generate some great great business for you in the future. And one of the things I want to circle back to is is your your focus on travel leaders. Obviously, you made a big bet on travel agents, travel advisors now, and travel agencies at, at a time when you know some people are like you know you ask about are travel agents still around? I mean, we still get that question. It's crazy, but obviously, you thought they're going to be around for a while. Yeah, we still do. In fact. The growth rate at Travel Leaders pre-pandemic was higher than the growth rate at either Expedia or Booking.com, which people don't know. And so uh, we had almost double the growth rate uh, in our in our offline business, Travel Leaders, as the online business. I think what we, what you're going to see is a marriage of those things. So, for instance, we have a a product that we've released at TripAdvisor called Reco that you may have seen. I know it very well. Yeah, and, I wrote about it. And and that idea is to take people who need to talk to somebody or who need advice or who need or who need um, uh, input uh, in their travel planning and take them from online and get them offline right because what happens is if you're searching on Google or TripAdvisor whoever it is and you need advice you generally abandon your internet searching and you go try to find advice typically from a friend or someone well why not give them an expert right why not give them someone someone that can do it one of the things that we've seen proof, proof positive of my idea not not just in reco but in but in but in travel agents in general is during the pandemic we've actually lent a bunch of travel agents i won't say who mm. but we've lent a bunch of travel agents to airlines who can't answer the phone and when i say a bunch i mean thousands We've taken thousands of travel agents and we have them answering the phone for airlines because right now in the pandemic, as people start to as people start to plan, they want to ask questions, they want to talk about travel, they want to understand can they rebook their tickets? They want to know, you know, the, the EU has this wonderful PLF system that, that, that many people don't understand. They want to talk to an agent. They want to know what testing procedures they can it's get. It's very complicated, right? As we, it's, even on the ship, we've had a few shifts in policy, I think, at, of European countries that we're visiting. Right? Correct. It, well, we're on the ship, yeah. right? And so people want to talk to someone. Typically, you know, Expedia, Booking, TripAdvisor, they're all great companies, right. but they do something some one thing very well right um, they don't do everything very well like a travel agent and so and so we're, we've been supportive of the travel agent community I don't I can't think of anybody who who's been more supportive of that of that community and we're going to continue to be well, I actually interviewed the the two guys who run Rico. Uh, okay. They're very interesting guys, uh, and some of them they have a travel background. It was a fascinating interview, and it's nice to know that you're you're part of that and connecting travel advisors to that to a trip advisor. So it's great. Well, I don't know if my I know you interviewed my brother in the in the past who runs Travel Leaders or Internova, um, but one of the things a lot of people don't know, and I don't know if you mentioned it, is my mom was a travel agent for for over twenty years. Wow, no, uh, I didn't know that. Yeah, she was a cruise ship travel agent. So from our kitchen table every night. My mom was planning uh, trips. We learned the value of, w of what a travel agent uh, uh, has input into, into the trip planning process, and we saw her do it literally every night. I don't know that she was that successful a travel agent, uh, but she was in there trying. And, well, and, now and you're giving them the tools to be successful. Right? We hope so. Yeah. We hope so. Now, uh, what's the strategy for Sartaris going forward? Uh, you mentioned you have these divisions that uh, you're, you're going to do some venture capital, you're going to do other things. What, what, what is the goal and uh, how are you going to keep identifying companies that you want to invest in? So uh, right now is an interesting time for us because... Well, Post-COVID too. Yeah, yeah well, well, during COVID and, and post-COVID, we, we actually raised billions of dollars during COVID. Um, we knew that the companies were going to need the money, uh, companies writ large and investors wanted a way of supporting the industry and and also let's be let's be fair making profits 
And so uh, the companies needed capital. That marriage is good when in, we have capital that investors want to put with money that uh, put in with with money that companies need. Okay. Um, and so we probably did more investing over the last 12, 15, 18 months than we had in the previous few years. Yeah, I noticed. I noticed. It. Well, Hertz was huge. Yeah, it was, uh, very big. Um, but even absent Hertz. Um, there's a lot of things that we do that that people don't pay a lot of attention to. So, for instance, um, we did the debtor in possession financing uh, uh, along with a couple partners at Latam uh, Airlines. Oh, right, yeah, and that they've had their issues over the past few months. Right. right. Uh, we also uh, did a deal with uh, Azul, uh, David Nealman's company. I know him, Dave. I had Dave on a panel the other day. Right. And so we put hundreds of millions of dollars into into Azul dur during this time. Um, we've got a bunch of different investments that that go across everything. We're going to keep making those. So. Normally what happens is we sit in our office and we dream up stuff that we want to invest in. Where do we want to put our money? And as you can imagine, um, it's a lot of calling outbound and going to meetings and a lot of dry wells get drilled in, in, in that system. A lot system. of flying around meeting partners. Abso absolutely. During the pandemic, that polarity reversed. So what happened was every day we'd be receiving two, three, five calls because people knew us as the guys who would put money to work right. during a time that no one else wanted to put money to work. And that continues today. So we've seen more demand for our expertise than we ever have before. So I think the first part of that is we're going to continue to make investments. Um, I think you'll see us make uh, more investments in Europe than we have in the past. Um, they seem to be lagging in terms of the recovery uh, versus America. A lot of the domestic U.S. businesses are largely recovered um, in terms of demand. Well, Hertz, you know, Hertz we're, we're for everyone's looking at 22 and saying this is going to be an amazing year and 23 even better, right? Yeah, that, that's it. Listen, it's possible. Who knows? But 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 I'm looking forward to recovery. When that's going to happen is is anybody's guess. We're spending. I'm spending a lot of time with governments because our supposition is. People are starting to travel. What they want is certainty, right? right? They want certainty in the planning process. They want certainty in the traveling process. There's going to be more friction than there was in the past in traveling, mm. right? And and but people want to understand exactly what that is. That's why travel agents are so valuable, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, they're more valuable than ever right now. Right. But we're we're counseling the governments not to change that policy. Lay down the policy and keep it the same, rather than keeping to flip flop. You you look at certain Caribbean islands. Very difficult because one week they're open, the next week they're not. Super inconvenient. So people just avoid that. Um, whereas you look at a country like Portugal, you look at a country like Greece, you look at a country like Croatia, Iceland. They've laid down policies and people. Are, are traveling to those countries in droves, n not necessarily because they're safer or less safe than other countries, but because the travel process is certain. So we've done that uh, with them. But back to Sertara's, um, we're going to keep uh, investing our capital. Uh, we've got a series of very supportive investors. Uh, they like, they seem to like our strategy and, and what we're doing. Um, we're going to keep investing kind of a third of our capital in the distribution space, a third in the supplier space, and probably a third in, let's just call it other, uh, other. interesting things. Well, such as the Azul and things like that that you could just go into and, and, and help them out at that point. Right? Yeah, well, the, that's really a supplier, right? That's a supplier. You're right. You're, yeah. you're a supplier, but there's, there are other there's things. some other things like TripAdvisor. I'm not sure okay. whether you'd put we're that in the distribution or not, but it, but things like TripAdvisor. I think you'll see us do a lot of innovative things. Um, uh, we're fairly careful. Our team's expanding. We're going to be hiring more people. Uh, we, again, expanding our presence in Europe. Uh, we've we've got we, we've got a, a, a great growing business, and it's and again we're, we're we're I think we're the most in terms of capital we're certainly the most supportive. Yeah, um, absolutely. Now you mentioned those those countries that were a little more open and were consistent policies. I've actually been to three out of the four already this year, yeah. so it's pretty amazing uh, to see. You know, Greece. I went on a cruise. Uh, uh, Portugal. Of course, we flew in here right. to come on this cruise, and then uh, 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 you know the the, the uh, one of the Caribbean countries. Now I, I've been to Saint Martin. That was consistent, but you're right. I was on a cruise in the Caribbean, and two islands turned us away because the crew hadn't been co had, hadn't been uh, vaccinated. Mm. So you can't get this policy. You got to get it all consistent. And this is what we've been asking for from governments around the world. But I think right. it'll eventually happen. So we'll just have to wait and see. Let's let's close out with this company, World uh, Atlas Ocean Voyages. What do you see the future for for Atlas Ocean? So 
again, Mario and Paula are great operators. They have, they're delivering an excellent product. Albert is a great operator as well, working alongside them. And I think we have capital. We've got an expansion plan. We're going to be delivering more ships uh, coming yeah. forward. This is not the last one that the, in, in the plan. Um, a lot of people during during the pandemic, if you if you will, put their ship building and their ship delivery on pause. We, right. we, di we did not. So as the demand starts growing, we're going to be delivering more ships into that demand where others are, aren't going to be able to. I think, um, you know, if Mario wanted to do an acquisition, we'd be supportive of that. Uh, if Mario wanted to uh, expand into other different products. He's listening over there, but. <laughs> no, he knows that already. He knows we love him. Um, uh, if if he wanted to expand in other product, product categories, we'd be supportive of that. So uh, really, the the direction of the company is up to Mario um, and and Paula, and and we're gonna we're gonna do our best to be supportive of whatever they want to do. But we th we're, we we think Atlas has, has I, I love the branding on the ships. I love the style. Um, I'm gonna go buy a T-shirt right after this. Me too. I got to get that polo. Right? Exactly. I'm gonna go buy a T-shirt. We we'll come back. We should have done, them, we done them. We should have had double. Anyway. We'll look like shameless advertising after that well that's what you do we have to promote the brand we have to promote travel right True. yes absolutely uh and and I'm, I'm happy to be here and hopefully we get a chance to have a coffee or a meal before the cruise ends uh, absolutely i'm looking forward to it well greg i want to thank you for taking the time uh grad, great great you're on board here to see uh one of your investments you know first cruise it's not even a real it's not a revenue cruise you're part of the shakedown so you're, yes. you're like this uh great to hear what you're doing with sartaris great stuff and i know a lot of uh our audience has been wondering well, what exactly is sartaris and what are the, what is their goal and what does the future hold for them but i think you've sort of clarified that for them and i appreciate you taking the time to speak with us anytime thank you very much appreciate it i'm james Schillinglaw, and this is insider travel report